what I'd like to talk about now is just to give you uh, an introduction to the mental ray shaders. Now, up until now, we've been using the standard scanline renderer, and in order to be able to use mental ray materials, we need to swap our renderer to the mental ray renderer, which makes sense really if you think about it. But I also just wanted to give you just a quick idea of what this renderer is capable of. You can create images that are as wonderful and as wacky as this, or as commercially viable as this, and believe me, this isn't a photograph, this is CG. It's absolutely incredible. Another thing to note about the, the mental ray renderer is really you wouldn't have had special effects and visual effects in the film industry for the last 20 to 25 years without it. So it's got a lot of pedigree, it's got a lot of history, and with the new releases of 3D Studio Max, it's becoming easier and easier to use. So without further ado, let's jump straight back into 3D Studio Max and let's start having a look at it, shall we? Now, as I mentioned, you can't access the mental ray materials without being in the mental ray renderer. So I guess, first of all, what we have to do is change our renderer from being a, sc a standard scanline renderer to being the mental ray renderer. So I'll come up over here to my render setup dialog. I'll click on that. And if I close all of these options, you should see your assign renderer. Occasionally we find the assign renderer are normally sort of down at the bottom here. I like to pull mine up to the top. You see, I just grab it, pull it up to the top, and I can open up that little X there. And what I'm going to do is under production renderer, you've got three little dots where it says choose renderer. I'm going to click on those and I'm going to click mental ray renderer and then OK. Now, it doesn't sound like or look like it's done an awful lot, but you notice all of my tabs have changed up at the top here, haven't they? Okay, so very, very useful. I'm going to close that dialog box down now. And now I'm going to open up my materials editor. First thing you'll notice, no change. No change at all. Until I come to press my standard button and I want to change the type of material that I'm looking for. And then all of a sudden, we suddenly notice that there are a, is a long list. All the blue ones are the material types which are relevant to the scanline renderer. And all of the yellow ones can be used with mental ray. So you can see there is a huge amount that's been added into this. Absolutely brilliant. Now, the architecture and design ones, which are our templates, very much like our architectural materials, we'll come and talk about in a few minutes. But I just wanted to introduce you to some of the materials that we have available to us here. We've got, obviously, the architecture and design um, preset, you know, preset templates. We've got a car paint material. This one's for reproducing cars so if you're you know you're working in in that industry you can get absolutely perfect reflections on car and metallic paints as if they've been lacquered the whole nine yards i've got this thing uh, matte shadow material that's for just casting shadows onto a material and having it blank the rest of the time we can even take a mental ray shader now really what i would say about these is unless you really know about mental ray and at this stage in your CG career, I'm guessing that you're, you're probably quite new to the whole thing. I would kind of leave that one alone because what that does is it, contain, it creates a blank container. And unlike a material that we've got, which is a standard material here, it doesn't even have a notion of diffuse or specular or anything like that. It's a completely blank container. Now, the reason for that is that mental ray containers aren't just surface shaders. Okay, so when I say a surface shader, I'm talking about like an object like this, that's a surface shader. I can also have camera shaders, I can have light shaders, and I can have volume shaders as well. So really, there's an awful lot that we can do with mental ray materials um, that perhaps you hadn't even thought about before. Now, some of the new, new uh, materials that we had come in in 2009 were these pro materials. These are above and beyond the presets that you get with your architecture and design and really what I would say with the pro materials is the best advice I can give you is use the libraries okay you can get some fantastic results with pro materials 
but for goodness sakes use the libraries with them don't try making your own at this stage because you'll sit there and fiddle around with them and with about five seconds you'll get lost however they there is a whole set of pro material libraries that come with um, 3d studio max for for this mental ray um, pro materials and they're fantastic really good can't sing their praises enough you may have heard me um mention earlier on about transparent materials we've got in here oh, we can't get to it because we're, we're on this uh, but i spoke about you know if you, if you put a, a, a torch behind your hand and you see the light shining through it well that's what we've got here this sss means sub surface scattering so we've got a subsurface fast just as a general one we've got one for a skin we've got a, a skin with a displacement so if you want old gnarly skin that's more for sort of creatures and we've got a subsurface physical uh, material. That's more for doing things like um, semi-opaque material, something like a, a milk, for example, or something maybe like an iceberg, perhaps. So, you know, you've got some pretty wacky things going on here. Uh, we've also got a utility uh, bump and displacement combiner, and they are for working on specifically displacement materials. So, for, for example, if I was doing a knurl, on a piece of metal, I might consider using one of these utility bump combiners that would help me combine several different types of maps in order to create a low and high frequency bump or displacement. So that's really about the material types that we can use. Uh, and if even if I just click on my mental array, as I said here, and I'll OK that, you see we haven't even got a surface shader. So I can click on my surface shaders. And again, what we see in here is Everything that was green was the standard 3D Studio Max. Everything which is yellow is the mental ray shader. Also notice up here, look, that's gone blank because we've got no idea what we're putting in the surface. So we've got everything from we can pick specifically glass, we can make by hand. Uh, a dielectric material is always useful for uh, things like glass as well, as well as the glass. Notice this says Loom by it. Loom is the name of a specific company that makes shaders just for mental ray. Uh, we've got a whole load of things. Here. Ambient occlusion is a very, very useful one. We'll come and talk about that when we go into lighting. Um, well, it's just, there's just so many. We've got an ocean shader here, uh, which is absolutely uh, brilliant. We Again, we can use that in the architecture and design template materials. That's in there. Um, we've got things like uh, physical subsurface scatter physical shaders in there again. We've got transparency, we've got wet and dry mixes, so you can have two materials that are the same, but one, for example, if you have a, a particle touch a surface and splash, where the particle touches and splashes, it can go from one material to another, so you've got a lighter and a slightly darker, more shiny, wetter material, that's your wet and dry mix. Um, it's, it's just all sorts of endless things that you can do with this. And really, we're going to try and stay as much as possible with just using our, if I click back on this, our architecture and design, which we'll talk about in a moment, because they're the presets and they're the easier ones. But just to make you aware of what is available in, in, um, in Mental Ray and just how vast it is and how flexible and how amazing it is as well.